Ancestry.com, one of the world's leading genealogy websites, has a card catalog that can make it so much easier to find records, even if you're not a subscriber, and to search within them if you are a subscriber. Are you using Ancestry.com's card catalog to full advantage? Take this quick tour to see what you might be missing. Before I give you the full tour on the site, I just want to show you this, a picture of an old card catalog filing system. Way back when, before our libraries had computer catalogs, they filed the names of books and other holdings in drawers like these, where patrons could search alphabetically by author, title, or subject for the materials they wanted. Ancestry's card catalog is something like that. Imagine that each drawer opens to lead you to specific record collections. Within that 1900 U.S. Federal Census drawer, for example, you'll be able to access the records for each state, down to the county, down to the city level, etc. As you can see here on the Ancestry card catalog, I haven't even signed into the website yet because I want to show you that you can search the catalog whether you're a subscriber or not. If you're not a subscriber at Ancestry.com, searching the card catalog for the records they have can help you, first of all, know that particular records may exist that you may not know about. It can help you decide if you want to go search for those elsewhere or if it might be worth subscribing to Ancestry.com to get access to that site or finding a library near you that has the Ancestry Library Edition which might have those records available to you that way. As you can see here, the Ancestry collection is made up of more than 33,000 individual record collections from different places around the world. And as I roll over them, you can see there, there's quite a variety. There's a little batch of Nottinghamshire church records, but also some from all over the world. They range in size from small collections to large collections, like more than a billion names in the Genia Net Community Trees Index that was recently brought over through Ancestry's acquisition of Genia Net. The default sort here is by the newest ones, so when you first bring up the card catalog, you'll see what's new and in the Ancestry collections. But you can also sort by the uh, recently updated collections, which can show you that there's a lot of collections that continue to be updated, and the record count, so you can see the largest collections on the site. Now, of course, you can also run more targeted searches over here. If you know the name of a collection you might want to search, you can run a title, search by title. But I find that the best kind of search to do when I'm looking for particular records is by a keyword because I don't necessarily know how Ancestry is going to title a collection. So if I'm looking for Civil War records for the United States Civil War, I might just enter Civil War and see what I find. However, there are better ways to search the site sometime than just a general keyword like that, and that is to use these filter options here on the left. I can filter by the kind of record I'm looking for. I can filter by the location and then drill down within that location. So if I search by Canada, and then I can filter down further to search within the various uh, provinces. I can also search by the time period. So let's say that I wanted Ontario records during the 1800s. Then I could see the collections that are available here. And if I am a member at Ancestry, then most of these collections are subscriber only for access to them. Then I could go ahead and click on the records to um, search within them and view the ones that I want. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you back and clear this because this is a collection that if you have U.S. roots, I want to show you a collection that everybody should be using. I'm going to go by record count because it's one of the very largest collections. The U.S. City Directories collection is one of the best collections to search within this particular type of portal because what I'm doing now is I'm telling Ancestry that I only want to search within their collection of U.S. city directories between 1822 and 95 and they do have other city directory collections that I can go to. This one was curated all at one time and has well over a billion records in it. So once you go into the front door for a particular collection like what you see here you'll learn things like how to use this record type 
And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the source information of where Ancestry sourced this from and learn more about the record type. I love to do this um, because in case I'm not familiar with records that I'm starting to search, I want to know about what I could expect to find in them. I want to know if certain cities or time periods are missing from this collection. And this will uh, often tell me the things that are either included or excluded in a collection. Down here, there are, um, they'll, it'll tell you updates. So that about section is really important to read. Now of course the search section is the part everybody wants to jump to and yes I can definitely go within here and I, if I'm just looking for my grandfather who has an unusual enough name that I won't add anything else if I want to find him in US city directories I can just enter that information and hit search and as you can see, it's showing me the possibilities. Since I'm not signed in, I can't go in and look at all of the details. But let's say I just want to explore the particular volumes that they have in this collection. And it would be great if I could find out which directories they have for my ancestors' time period and place. And then, of course, to be able to explore within them. So let's say that I'm looking for my relatives in Colorado in the city of Pueblo. So I can drill down here, and in this case, they let me choose either the city or the county because some directories were countywide and some were specific to cities. Now that I've chosen the city, I can choose which year I want. And as you can see, there's a broad range of years that are included in Ancestry's collection here. Let's say I want to take a look at 1899. Then I'll get a clickable version here. And if I were signed in, I could click to view the entire digitized directory. I could scroll through for my, looking for my relative's information, and I could explore other parts of the directory that might also be helpful to my research. In summary, use Ancestry's card catalog to explore all the collections they have for a particular place to find those gems you didn't know were there. Look for specific collections. If you're after a specific record type or type of information, watch for those that may have what you need. And then learn more about that collection in the About section at the bottom of the collection landing page. Search within a specific collection for your relatives' names but also browse within a collection as I showed you how to do with the city directories so that you might find additional information that the search feature doesn't bring up. I'm Sunny Jane Morton. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to Family Tree Magazine's YouTube channel.